We have now discovered that science fiction is, to a surprising degree, non-fiction. Four uh, science fiction writers are here to talk about their literature and the moon. Well, gentlemen, we sit here in the aftermath of this incredible adventure of man, this odyssey of reaching out into space and, in a sense, laying claim to it by our landing on the moon and looking at you three gentlemen who have been such qualitative practitioners of the science fiction art, the question immediately comes to mind, since you've been pretty remarkably accurate in your predictions in the past in your writing, did all of you or any of you predict this landing on the moon? And if so, when did it occur? When did you think it did? We'll start with you, Fred. I didn't predict the landing at any particular time. It was inevitable. It was just one of those things that had to happen. And I expected it to happen within my lifetime I'm glad to see that I made it. <laughs> and you, John? It's much the same thing. I was a believer in science. I was a believer in science fiction. All this would come to pass. It was a fixture of the present in those days for me. It's only a fixture of the present now for others. Did you touch upon thematically the landing on the moon? Not the landing show? on the moon, no. My few uh, space stories were full of pirates and trips to Mars. And here's the text bad boy of science fiction writers right over here. Isaac, what about you? Well, I tell you, back in 1939, I wrote a story about the first trip to the moon. I placed it in 1973, which so very shows close. the crackpot though I was, I was very conservative. Uh, the only thing was I followed science fiction tradition by having the first spaceship uh, built by a sole inventor, a lone eagle type fellow who built it out of old tin cans in his backyard. And he went around the moon in it without anybody's help. Came back, landed in a tree or something, said, I've been to the moon. Well, you say that happened just, but it is true thematically that in most early science fiction, it was the lone eagle concept, was it not? The sense of one man facing the unknown rather than the crew idea. Sure, and not only did they build a spaceship in their backyard and take off the next day, but they didn't stop at the moon. Doc Smith uh, had a fellow who was working as a chemist at the National Bureau of Standards one afternoon. Two days later, he had conquered the whole galaxy uh -huh. in the Skylark of Space. But I think that that was important, you know. I was lured into science and engineering by science fiction, and if I'd had any idea how hard it was, I might never have arrived here. <laughs> I wonder about that, John. I think in your case, it must have been preordained. But having reached this plateau, this lunar plateau, immediately it comes to mind, what is the next basic thematic area for the science fiction writer. We have touched upon the moon. We have, in a sense, predicted it as science fiction writers. I, I use the collective respectful we here, not, certainly not me. What do you write about next? Where does man go in his science fiction beyond the moon? Isaac? Well, one of the things I've made use of a, gr of a great deal has been the man-like robot with man-like intelligence. Now, this is still in the future. And on the other hand, it's still something we're likely to accomplish. So I, for one, plan to stand pat on this to a great degree. I shall continue writing robot stories. I think that for my lifetime anyway, they'll remain science fiction. 